hello students welcome to sources classes today we are going to start with the topic real analysis okay now real analysis concerns sequence and series and i know many of you students really dislike sequence and series because you know it brings fears into you but uh, nothing to worry it's not like some type of a ghost that you had to fear it okay we are going to start with sequence and series and we are going to learn it properly okay so what happens in uh, sequence and series is if you can write any number let's say if i give you a set of numbers and if i write it uh, with commas separating them with commas let's say 2 comma 4 comma 6 comma 8 comma and so on so the way of writing numbers by separating them with commas this type is called a sequence all right now what type of a sequence is this let's say i i'm going to show you 4 minus 2 you're going to get 2 then again 6 minus 4 you're going to get 2 again 8 minus 6 you're going to get 2 so everywhere you're getting a same common difference and you all have studied in class 11 or in class 12 even in class 10 that every time you get a common difference okay no matter which way you subtract you can also subtract 2 minus 4 doesn't only mean that you have to subtract 4 minus 2 okay so whenever you get these type of common differences it's called an arithmetic sequence okay this is an arithmetic sequence now in general the definition of a sequence would be this that a sequence on a set s let's say if i give you a set s okay s is a set and a set of numbers that's empty let's say five okay then seven then uh, say nine then eleven and so on there are many elements in this set uh, this is not an infinite set this is a finite set okay it will end in some element uh, whatever it is let's say the nth term all right so if i give you a function say f of x and if i write 2x plus 3 all right and i tell you that start putting the values for x let's say x belongs to the x belongs to natural numbers so i start putting the values of n over here let's say if i put 1 then i'm going to get a 5 if i put 2 2 is a 4 5 6 7 so I'm getting these values from the set. If I start pulling, putting up values over here, let's say 3 to a 6, 7, 8, 9. So I'm getting these values over here. When I start putting the values of x, and the values of x are natural number. Okay. So if you get a function like this, such that, if you get a function like this, such that, when I start putting the values of x, and x belongs to natural number, and I start getting the range okay i start getting the values of f of x which belongs to this set s okay then this is called a type of a sequence all right now if you would like to write the definition you will find the definition of sequence on many books but if i am to tell you a sequence on a set s is a function which assigns to each natural number a u unique element of s so for each natural number you put over here you will get a unique element of f of x which will be in the set s okay a set will be given to you and a sequence is denoted by this form x n or it is denoted by x n this way within curly brackets so you this is this is the way you will denote a sequence so this is a sequence this type of a sequence all that are written in, in a function form but it is okay okay and the xn this this xn is the nth term it is the nth term of the sequence don't get confused okay this will be the nth term you all have already learned it in junior classes that xn is the nth term of a sequence and the nth term can be found found out depending whether it is a nth term of a gp or if it is the nth term of a ap like i have showed you in the previous part of here this is the nth term uh, the uh, you can find the nth term of this ap over here 
the 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 thing that you can see over here. Okay, these 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 uh, these numbers. Okay, forms an AP. So you can find the nth term, and the nth term will be denoted by x n. How do you find the nth term of this AP? A plus n minus one d. You know this already. X n is equal to a plus n minus one d. So this type of a sequence, this type of a sequence is an arithmetic sequence, and from this arithmetic sequence we get this nth term which is denoted by x n and from this x n if you keep putting the uh, you, you put the first value then n uh, whatever n you get you will start getting the uh, different different values over here that will belong to some set some set will be given to you and it will be belong to some set so you will get a sequence of x n from here all right now the what are the range of the sequence of course whatever values you are going to put over here will go uh, will give you the range of the sequence right whatever values you are going to put over here okay whatever values of a n and d you are going to put over here slowly slowly you will get the range of the sequence is like a function f of x yeah you plug in the value of f of x let's say 1 by 1 by x it is and if you write f of x n then it will be 1 by n say okay let's just rub that off one sec because i'm getting kind kind of untidy but uh, we need to understand and concentrate on the matter i will say it's 1 by n all right <coughs> excuse me so in this what happens we will start putting this stuff uh, is the function of x uh, uh, of xn and we start putting the values of n over here and we will start getting a sequence of rational numbers all right so uh, let's go ahead and try and understand the next part of it so this was uh, just the definition of sequence now we are going to un and and the range of the sequence you can easily understand is the y values okay is just the y values you get the range of the sequence what is a constant sequence the next part would be a constant sequence constant sequence very simple all the values that will come out in a constant all the values that will come out as a number as a real number as a constant will be the constant sequence all right now now we are going to understand the real part of real analysis all right what is the real part of it is we need to understand the boundedness of a sequence how the sequence is bounded bounded means the sequence has a bounding point means it cannot go beyond that point all right it has to be less than that point let's say the sequence that i i let's say this f of xn is equal to 1 by n such that n belongs to natural number now each time i put the value of n over here let's say n starting from 1 okay let's just get more space around here this is all cram cramped up Let's say n equals to one. So f of x one, f of x one is going to give you one by one. Then if you put f of x two, then you are going to get one by two. And if you put f of x three, you are going to get one by three. You will notice that this value, this value, this va this value is less than one, of course. This value is again less than one, of course. So when you have n equal to one, you are getting a value where this function is getting bounded you see this function will not go greater than 1 okay this function will not be greater than 1 it will always be less than equal to 1 why because no matter whatever value you put of here for n it will always be less than equal to 1 all right so this kind of a sequence is bounded now there are two types of boundedness the first one will be bounded above and the second one will be bounded below so the first one would be bounded above bounded above so what is bounded above so if a sequence let's say i i have a sequence let's say it is denoted by x of n okay so in this sequence if it is such that this sequence is less than equal to some value k okay and of course the n definitely belongs to natural number okay 
the n definitely belongs to natural number and you see this xn this this sequence no matter what value you put over here it will always be less than equal to some k okay and the k will belong to a real number okay it will not be a natural number don't get confused okay i know some of you are people want to cry and all but please don't cry on this there's nothing to cry about okay yeah, i know it's get, it is a little dif difficult but a uh, very simple concept if you understand the function that the type of a function like suppose say f of x n is equal to 1 by n and i start putting the values of n so n is equal to 1 you will notice it will always be 1 so the real number over here the k over here is this so it will never increase it will never go higher than one no matter what value you put over here it will never go higher than one so this type of a sequence x n you can you don't have to write it in the function form okay you can get rid of the f you can get rid of the f and instead write it in a uh, sequence form all right just hold on i'll show you so if you write this in a sequence form it means the same thing okay so this type of a sequence is bounded above and is bounding point or the bounding value would be one all right now we will also have to understand if that is if a sequence is bounded above then a sequence definitely has to be bounded below okay there has to be a point where the sequence will be bounded below okay so the second one will be bounded below the second one will be bounded below all right so okay so the next part would be the bounded below okay now in this you will notice that a sequence x n definitely if you go back to the bounded above if the x n over here if you, you go back to the bounded above in your screen and if you look at this xn over here in this bounded above the rule says that xn the sequence okay has to be less than equal to some value k so of course for the bounded below then what happens is that the sequence has to be the sequence has to be greater than equal to some say small k okay you can also take some other alphabet okay k m p anything you can take doesn't matter about the alphabet so in the bounded above in the bounded above part you are getting x of n is less than equal you are getting x of n over here x of n you are getting less than equal to k but in the bounded below now the x of n has become greater than equal to k that means it will be either greater than the some real number k or will be equal to it that means it will not go less than the value k let me give you an example okay let me give you an example let's say if i give you x of n is equals to 3 n minus 2 all right a simple type of an example now of course n belongs to natural number and uh, x n will be less than equal to some k so let's find that k so let's start so x of 1 if you do 3 into 1 minus 2 you're going to get a 1 all right now you do x2 you're going to get 3 into 2 you're going to get let's hold on done right up yeah now you can see so 3 into 2 minus 2 that is 6 minus 2 is going to give you 4 so you see the first one that you're going to get is 1 the second number is 4 and so on if you do x3 that is 3 into 3 minus 2 that is 3 3 is a 9 minus 2 that is 7 so you will see the values of xn keep on increasing but it has a below bounded point you see what is the below bounded point x n is always greater than equal to 1 okay 
I hope you have understood this. It's a very very simple concept. Okay, the concept is very very simple. It is uh, like uh, you know your class 11, class 12 things only, but a little bit uh, in detail where you have the boundedness and all that. Okay, so the sequence is bounded above it if it has a bounded above point that would be k okay and this k is called the upper bound this k if it is bounded above then this k is called the upper bound so let's write that in a different color upper bound this is called the upper bound so which implies that the when it is bounded below then the k that you see over here is called the lower bound all right very simple logic this is the lower bound and that is a upper bound so when a sequence has a lower bound and an upper bound then that sequence is called a bounded sequence so the next one will be a bounded sequence please pardon my handwriting it looks like handwriting I understand but uh, <laughs> you seen hand scratching uh, the flow so it's somewhat like that but please concentrate on the mathematics so bounded sequence what is a bounded sequence when x of n when the sequence is less than equal to some small k but greater than equal to some k value some uh, capital K we have differentiated the two k's okay you can write a and b over here some it will be greater than a greater than equal to some value a and less than equal to some value k so what we have we done we have actually merged these two things this this one okay and this one we have merged these two things and we have made a bounded sequence what is the bounded sequence a bounded sequence is a sequence whose values will be less than equal to k but greater than equal to some k and what is this k? this k and the capital k they both belong to real numbers and the n over here belongs to a natural number so i hope this type of uh, logic is uh, definitely keep clear to you so if you would like to write the definition of a bounded sequence the definition can be found anyway okay so a sequence is said to be bounded if it is bounded above as well as bounded below thus a sequence a x n is bounded if there exist two real numbers k and capital k so if we are going to get k and capital k two real numbers such that the sequence is bounded above here and bounded below here so that type of a sequence is called a bounded sequence now what if there is a bounded sequence then there has to be an unbounded sequence as well so what is an unbounded sequence what is an unbounded sequence simple logic the sequence that is not bounded is called an unbounded sequence just let me change that number four doesn't look like a number four. i don't know what even i, I was writing okay anyways so the fourth point would be an unbounded sequence so the sequence is not bounded the sequence is not bounded at all the sequence will carry on and on and on it is not bounded below as well as it is not bounded above okay all right so any 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 sort of a sequence let's say x n is equals to minus 1 whole to the power n so you will notice that when you put 1 over here you get a minus 1 when you put x equal to 2 you're getting 1 when you put x equal to 3 you're getting uh, again minus 1 so you're getting two values over here so you can see the two values if you apply this logic to the bounded sequence okay then x of n 
will always be greater than equal to minus one and less than equal to one. So this does has a this does have a bound. But there will be some type of sequences where the sequence will never have an upper bound. Neither will it have a lower bound. Okay. So we will discuss about those sequences more and more while we do questions on them. Okay. For for this part only examples and only the explanation and questions we will be doing on this. All right, we will be doing some examples also, and uh, there are many more of them. Uh, there are many more things that we'll be doing in this chapter because real analysis is a really long chapter. Okay, uh, let me just uh, s tell you one example of something that will not be bounded because I should give an example of something that will not be bounded so let me just uh, give you an example of uh, a sequence that will not be bounded okay let's show you a sequence that's not bounded so this was actually a bounded sequence the one that I just did for you this one this one is a bounded sequence you can see it's bounded above as well as bounded below okay so this is a bounded sequence this is a bounded sequence sorry this is a bounded sequence bounded sequence but what is not about what is an unbounded sequence then so let's try and understand an unbounded sequence let's say let's let's give you an example let's say a n or x of n you can write anything okay is minus 1 to the power n into n now you see now you, now, you, now you see the sequence is neither bounded above nor bounded below start putting values a1 will be what will be over here minus 1 to the power 1 over here 1 so you're going to get minus 1 then a2 what are you what are you going to get minus 1 to the power 2 so you are going to get a 2 over here so that would be a positive 1 so a 2 over here okay then a3 what are you going to get so this is a minus 1 then you're going to get a minus 3 so you can see what type of numbers you're getting you're getting minus 1 minus 3 over here so it is going more towards the negative side also then again you will go towards the positive like if you continue from here from if you continue to a4 then what are you going to get so uh, a4 would give you uh, just a 4 right so you see it's going to the positive side also you're getting positive values also then you're getting negative values also that is going further more towards the negative side you'll get minus uh, uh, 5 minus 7 and all that okay uh, you will get the negative terms so you see there is no bound okay it's continuing towards the positive side as well as towards the negative side hence you will not find a bound over here so this type of sequence where x of n is equal to minus 1 to the power n into n is an unbounded sequence this type of a sequence is an unbounded unbounded sequence understand okay this is an unbounded sequence simply because we are not getting any kind of a bound in this sequence all right now the next part would be supremum and infimum okay the next part of this would be supremum and infimum let's get back to the black pen supremum okay the next topic uh, the next uh, topic would be number five you can write it as five you you write it in order doesn't matter you can if you're taking down notes please write it in order all right so next one five will be a supremum supremum or it's also called or least least upper bound least upper bound l u b l u least upper bound 
suppose there is a sequence x of n and if x of n is bounded above that means greater than equal to some value let's say u it has an upper bound u okay so x of n is less than equal to some value u okay that means it has an upper bound u that means will not go greater than u then what happens there are there are two parts to this the first part is that u n uh, sorry not u n we just u uh, by mistake i was writing x n and all the sequences with x n so u n came out so u is the upper bound u is the upper bound u is the upper bound and so let's just say that if we take any epsilon greater than zero let's take any type of a number epsilon but epsilon has to be greater than zero cannot be less than zero okay make sure you take a number epsilon greater than zero then then there will exist then there will exist a term there will exist a term a k there will exist a term a k such that such that there will exist a term a k such that such that u minus the epsilon will be less than a k okay so what does it mean it means that if xn if over here xn has an upper bound if xn does contain an upper bound and that upper bound is u all right then of course u will be called its upper bound if xn is greater uh, if xn has an upper bound then u is the upper bound u is called as the upper bound and if if we can find an epsilon if we can find this type of an epsilon any number epsilon no matter how small it may be but greater than 0 make sure uh, it's not supposed to be less than 0 okay it has to be greater than 0 no matter how small it may be then there exist a term ak you will find a term ak such that whenever you do u minus the upper bound minus that small epsilon value you will always get a value less than that ak and what is this ak this is some sort of an assumed value ak okay ak is an assumed value where when you do u minus epsilon all right when you do u minus epsilon and that will be less than the term ak all right so if there is a supremum then there has to be an infimum that means if you have an upper bound then you must have if you have a least upper bound then you must also have a lower bound is it isn't it you must have a lower bound right if you have the upper part you have your head then you must have your legs as well otherwise how are you going to walk okay so the next one will be the a sixth one most probably that is the fifth one up here yeah that's the fifth one so this would be the sixth one and that would be the greatest lower bound greatest lower bound what is the greatest lower bound it's also given as g l b greatest lower bound let's say if i have a sequence a n or x n i am going to take x n to get so if i have a x n as a sequence and this x n sequence is bounded below that means less than equal to some bound l okay it is bounded below it is bounded below then it has 
a greatest lower bound and L is called L is the GLB that is the greatest lower bound L is called the greatest lower bound so which means that the sequence over here the sequence here will have a least upper bound that is L okay so if this if this sequence has a least upper bound then L this L over here that you can see is called the greatest lower bound don't get confused by the name greatest and least upper bound least upper bound means a simple english logic is that that least upper bound means a number that the sequence cannot go beyond so that's the least number that the sequence cannot go beyond and the greatest lower bound means this is the greatest number that the sequence can start with okay and then it continues because it will never go below that so that is the greatest number it will start with okay it's a simple simple logic all right so l is the greatest lower bound and if that happens then what happens is we can give find a value epsilon no matter how small it is but greater than zero such that such that l plus e will be greater than a k where a k is some term a k where where a k a k or you can write this as k2 all right you can write this as k2 because we can't take a k on both of them the first one i can write as a k a, a k1 all right this is k1 all right so this is the first a k for the uh, least upper bound and uh, this is the ak for the greatest lower power so this part will be greater than where ak is some term some term that of course you will find out while you are doing the question you will definitely be able to assume that term okay nothing to worry about all right there is nothing to worry about now so this part you see the epsilon plus the least upper uh, least uh, greatest lower bound when you add them will be greater than some term a k2 in the previous one it was when you subtract them it was less than some term a k1 right but in this one you will have to add the least uh, greatest lower bound and the number that you have taken epsilon such that both of them added will be greater than some term a k 2 all right okay now let's go on to the next part now the next part would be the limit of a sequence so what is the limit of a sequence limits very easy to understand limits calculus you all have studied in class 11 and 12 okay that was the wrong thing you all have studied in class 11 and 12 about the limits and all that so this is like a definition a limit definition all right so limit of the sequence so the next one seventh one will be limit limit of a sequence now this is a definition in this way let's say if i have a sequence x of n if i have some sequence let's say x of n now if this x of n okay and uh, if this x of n we can see after putting the values of n we can see that this x of n is tending to some limit say l okay then l belongs to real number if the l belongs to the real number then of course l will belong to the real number then the l is called l is called the limit the limit l is called the limit of the sequence l is called the limit of the sequence all right if now there is another condition l will be called the limit of the sequence if 
there will exist if there exists okay if there exists for every epsilon that is greater than zero there will exist okay there will exist an m that would belong to a natural number n okay that will belong to a natural now m will depend this this m will depend on this epsilon e okay this m will depend depend on the epsilon e now what is happening over here the limit of a sequence x of n will tend to a limit l and the l will belong to a real number then l will be called a limit of the sequence only when there will be an epsilon greater than 0 and there will ex there will exist a m and this m will depend on epsilon that means the m has to be less than the epsilon such that a n such that a n minus l the absolute value of a n minus l will be less than epsilon and the m the m of here will definitely be less than equal to n all right let's understand once again the limit of a sequence limit everything has a limit all right all functions have a limit okay so limit of a sequence will be called termed as l l will be the limit of the sequence let's put a different color now uh, let's say this one okay so this l will be called the limit of the sequence only when there will exist an epsilon that will be greater than zero and also an m that will depend on this epsilon okay it will depend on this epsilon and m will belong to a natural number such that a condition will be satisfied that a n minus the limit for the limit the l the limit point will be less than the epsilon that you have chosen and the m that you will choose will be less than equal to n it can be less than n and it also can be equal to n so these are the main main points that you need to understand and epsilon has to be chosen that will be greater than zero and m has to be chosen that will be belong that will belong to n but less than n or equal to n and the m will also depend on the epsilon all right it has to be less than epsilon okay and a n minus l will be less than the epsilon value then the sequence will contain a limit all right now we are going to learn about some algebra on the limit although you know this you have learned it in smaller classes but still i am going to write a few things for you that you might want to note down all right so the next part would be part eight and it will be algebra algebra okay of limits algebra of limits yeah the f is missing doesn't matter uh, it's nothing it's printing mistake okay you have to assume like search printing and there is a printing mistake so the algebra of limits with uh, limits you have a few uh, algebra so the first one will be limit n tends to infinity k a n will be equals to k a all right where k is a constant definitely k is constant okay second one let's go on to the second one limit n tends to infinity mod a n will be equal to mod a all right third one limit n tends to infinity a n plus b n will be equal to a plus b you must have learned all these things in smaller classes although infinity was not included okay but not to worry not to worry very very simple very 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 simple okay 
limit n tends to infinity it's like having a cake yeah yeah like you know minusing two cakes one cake is a n the other cake is b n i guess simply a minus b and get a beautiful chocolate cake yeah let's go on to part five limit n tends to infinity a n b n multiplied that is actually a dot b all right now of course if there is a multiplication there has to be a division as well all right so the sixth one would be limit n tends to infinity a n by b n is equal to a by b all right it's one more to this and that will be the part seven and that will be limit n tends to infinity one by a n is equals to one by a and of course a not equal to zero yeah do not have a equal to zero you must have that condition that a is not equal to zero all right so these these were the algebra on limits so what did we learn today so we learned many things today and uh, i want to go back and recapitulate on whatever we have learned today so we learned about sequence how to uh, write a sequence how a sequence is a uh, is type of a function and uh, how we can write values of n and uh, slowly slowly you know get the values of f of x for which a sequence will come out and those values which you will get for f of x will belong to some set that you have taken all right so this is the type of a sequence that you will get uh, you can get like 1 by n okay and you keep on putting the value of n n belongs to natural number just now i have shown you here x with x i have showed you but you know over here if you put n over here x n then you put have n over here so you have to put n over here and you have to put n over here okay so n belongs to natural number then you can write n belongs to now natural number and these x values will be different all right then we moved on to bounded sequence and we understood how a sequence can be bounded bounded above means the sequence has a point where the sequence will be less than equal to some where a value k all right so the sequence will be bounded above where it will be less than some value k it will be bounded above and i showed you an example as to how it can be bounded above okay and how it cannot go more than that bound so you see in this sequence you have the bounded above value that is 1 and all values no matter what natural number you put for n you will always get less than 1 yeah so the upper bound it has an upper bound it has 1 because all the values are less than 1 so there is a bound above the values less than 1 so it has an upper bound okay so it is a bounded above next we learned bounded below when the sequence is less than some value of here when the sequence is less than uh, sorry greater than equal to my mistake sequence is greater than equal to some value k so you can see x n i have taken a sequence of here where 3n minus 2 and of here you you will notice that the values are increasing yeah the values are increasing of here okay so the values will carry on increasing carry on increasing say we will take a set s and if we have right on till say uh say 21 is the last number so then it will be greater than equal to 21 and it will be uh it will not go beyond that so it will have a bound that will not go beyond that so it will have all numbers below that so you will it will go uh i mean it will it will go greater than that number it will greater than it will be greater than this number okay like this one you see not 21 one i was trying to write one but i wrote 21 so in the set s1 so the one is the is, is is it's bounded below so it will be always greater than this particular value one 
okay and uh, it, kill, it, it will also be equal to this particular value 1 but will not be less than this value 1 no matter what value you put for n this type of xn this xn will always be greater than or equal to the 1 this number 1 over here so the k is 1 over here for this k so xn xn is always greater than or equal to 1 here I have written it only. Okay. Then I moved on to bounded sequence where I have showed you that the sequence will be bounded above as well as bounded below. Combining the both bounded above and the bounded below, we have understood this. So there will be two real numbers, capital K and small k. Okay. And, and of course, n will be, you know, belonging to the natural number. Then unbounded sequence, the sequence that will not contain a bound and this type of sequence does not contain a bound, I have showed you. This type of sequence you are getting negative values as well as positive values. So it is jumping about and that type of a sequence is bounded above and bounded below. Both. This is bounded, bounded A and B, above and below, bounded above and bounded below. Okay. Next, supremum or the least upper bound where x of n will not be greater than some value. Okay. If greater than equal to some value, will be great, I mean, will be greater than equal to some value. Okay. And uh, it will contain an upper bound. And then you have to take an epsilon that is greater than 0. And there will exist a term A of k1 such that the upper bound minus that epsilon and of course epsilon has to be a small value but it has to be greater than 0 ok so u minus epsilon will be less than some value a k 1 similarly for the greatest lower bound ok or the infimum it is, it is the in, it, it's, it's infimum point the greatest lower bound will be the same thing where x of n will be less than equal to some value l Okay, it will not be greater than that value, it will always be less than L, like less than 1, like I have showed you in Xn, where Xn was, you know, Xn was uh, 1 by N. So, L will be the greatest lower bound and Epsilon will have to be greater than 0, you will have to take an Epsilon greater than 0, but a small Epsilon such that L plus E, the least upper bound plus the Epsilon will be greater than a k2 okay the previous one was less than so this is greater than next the limit of the sequence so what is the limit of the sequence of course the limit of the sequence will tend to some limit some number l and l will be called the limit of the sequence and you will again take an epsilon e greater than 0 epsilon greater than 0 and you will also take a number m that will belong to a natural number okay and a n the mod of a n the mod the mod value of a n minus the limit point will be less than epsilon this will this mod will always be positive this mod will always be for this value will always be positive okay next part after doing that i have showed you the algebra how some of the calculations can be done on the limits so limit of the first one tending to infinity where k into a n will just give you k a now the second one is this the third one is this this is all copying there is nothing uh, to you know this is uh, just uh, copy it and you, it's it's, it's, it's uh, very very easy just learn this part I'll learn all these type of simple simple formulas you can go back reverse the video and you know you can watch all these things watch it back so these are all the limits we are done for today and uh, we will definitely continue this in the next part and there is more to real analysis not this so I believe that students will uh, will definitely understand this and uh, will get smarter in the subject so
so keep taking as much help from our channel okay and uh, that's it for today thank you